Hey, how are you? I'm Slice of Otaku, and over on this channel, if you've been with us for some time, then you probably know that we have quite the history with Lapis Lazuli. One of my favorite things to do on this channel, and just with fiction in general, would have to be the speculation and or analysis of potential. And with characters in particular, there are just so many paths one may undertake. And Lapis, despite her fragility and innate purpose as a non-combatant, has always been one of the most powerful gems in this series. What's more is that as a character intended to be in the midst of overwhelming inner turmoil with associated PTSD, she was someone that a lot of people identified with. And although I personally found her recovery to, for the most part, be underfocused and overaccelerated, at the time, there were many contributing factors that led to that being the case. But I feel like at this point, that's all behind us. What happened, happened, and there's no going back, as she's grown and changed so much. And with the impending conflicts of Steven Universe's future, I'm expecting even more growth on her end. Because not only is there the looming presence of the perfect court soldier from Earth, Jasper, but there's also the presence of two new Lapis Gems. Now, when it comes to Jasper, we never really received a conclusive end to their relationship, regardless of how toxic it stood to be. The two were placed on completely opposite sides of the narrative, just as their unhealthy feelings for one another were truly recognized. And so, although Lapis has gone beyond her war and homeworld associated turmoil, there's still the chance of a bad breakup and relationship in general to rear its ugly head and do some damage which may be a really rough thing to focus upon, but ultimately may serve to facilitate a very adult sort of predicament. And seeing as how Stephen is no longer a child, should the narrative continue to be locked onto his perspective, as we may assume it will, I feel like we may be able to view the situation from a newfound lens of maturity, one with which we lack during Alone at Sea. And I've always been one to believe Lapis to be an integral component in the recovery of Jasper and that she could only ever do so in the event that she herself had recovered, and so there's no better time. Although, if you follow me on Twitter, you'd know I want Jasper to keep that same big bad energy up until the very end. But besides all that, there's still the matter of these other Lapises, and once again, with the shameless plug, if you follow me on Twitter, you'd know that this alone would have been game breaking back in the day. I mean, come on, our Lapis lifted up the ocean with a broken gem and washed our entire main cast at the same time. So for us to now have these two baddies as antagonists simultaneously is just crazy. And although the one on the left looks super intimidating like a JoJo stand, it's the one on the right I am really terrified by. Because as we all know, naval placement gems are complete psychopaths, and at that her hair's looking a bit wonky too. Now nearly a year ago, which is crazy to say, I made a video questioning what other Lapis Gems would be like, and I feel like it's more topical than ever, so I suggest you give it a look. But in it, we talked about how highly valued Lapises are on Homeworld, and how their purpose is the terraforming of planets to Homeworld's liking, which rather easily gives these two a reason to be upset. With the sudden shift of Homeworld's agenda, they no longer serve a purpose and have lost their high statuses. It's like trying to sustain celebrity culture within a suddenly communist regime. It just doesn't work out. So if Stevens happily ever after put them on the unemployment line, no wonder they're here to mess things up. And of course, Lapis's interactions with them would be really interesting to see, as we don't know what your typical Lapis Lazuli is like. We know our Lapis, who went through all of her inner turmoil and conflicts that she dealt with, conflicts which very much shaped her outlook on life. And throughout the series, there have been so many times where Lapis has questioned what is wrong with her. So to now see what a quote unquote normal Lapis would be like, could really help further bring things into perspective, and in turn give us an even better understanding of one of the most beloved characters in the series. And with that, it looks like she'll have her work cut out for her pretty soon, but I think she's ready. The thing about her gem placement is that it implicates a sort of innate vulnerability, but now that the mirror is behind her, 
she's able to see herself in a new way, and that's certainly something to look forward to. Guys, I want to know what you're thinking when it comes to all of this. Do you think that now being recognized to be a member of the core Crystal Gem cast will allow Lapis to flourish and be given her due diligence by the narrative, or will her inclusion not change all that much? Let me know in the comments. And I'd like to give a big ol' shout out to Art with Coda over on Instagram for providing the thumbnail for this video. If you like it, go ahead and share some of that otaku love his way. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.